I was telling some of the organizers uh, before I walked up here that I was really glad there was a break because Admiral Mix is a hard act to follow. I thought she did a tremendous job. It's really exciting and, uh, to hear about uh, everything they have going um, in the U.S. public health. Uh, we'll get through the, the normal disclaimers <laughs> pretty quick. But I'm here today to talk a little bit about disruption in healthcare, disruption with data, disruptive innovation, these are kind of the themes that I want to hit on today, and to do that, I'm going to share a couple different stories. One story will be from my life before CVS. Uh, one is from CVS, but along those same themes, and really opening up with that video, and, and InterSystems was gracious, and they said, hey, bring a 30-second to one-minute video. So true to form, I brought a four minute video, <laughs> but they accepted it and I appreciate that inner systems because it tells just a tremendous story. I imagine not many of you who are familiar with CVS knew that CVS had infusion nurses going to patients' homes. And I think that's an important thing to talk about because that is a, a disruption within uh, that system within the infusion process, the services, and not many people would think that it's going to come from CVS. So I'll talk a little bit more about what um, all the different things that go on at CVS Health, but first I want to tell a couple other stories. And this little girl is Madeline. I'll try not to get choked up during this. Um, I'll tell you the rest of that story later. Um, but um, she was a bit of a disruption when she arrived six weeks early and surprised her mom and I as our first child. Uh, we really didn't know what we were doing. Uh, we knew to go to the hospital at that moment. And, and then the hospital, we had Madeline and they said we could go. And we, are you sure? We're, we're new parents, you know, we're two days into this. Um, but uh, the reason I have a picture of Madeline here is uh, to talk a little bit about that joyous disruption and she has on her clipped on her pocket there of her Oshkosh Bagosh denim overalls very fashionable young lady at the time um, a pager now um, I, I am based in Massachusetts as is inner system so I should probably use the appropriate Massachusetts term for that device a beepa so she used to love to play with the beepa I want to have the beepa and that beeper represents another disruption using data in healthcare that I want to tell you a story about. When I, uh, prior to working at uh, CVS, I was employed at Mass General. And a colleague uh, actually went through this and shared this story with me. So this is not, this is not a firsthand story, but this, uh, he and I were very uh, close colleagues working in the same department. They shared a story about using data. The smallest amount, insignificant amount of data on systems that we had in place already made a profound difference in the patient experience and the provider experience. And my challenge to you today is to find those opportunities. You can disrupt with what you have on your desk already. And that is something my colleague did using that pager, using that BIPA. He w became aware in his work, which was at the, at the core of Massachusetts General Hospital in the, in the actual hospital, you know there's a lot of satellite organizations, that our emergency department, our ambulatory systems, our inpatient systems, our bed management were all different systems and they didn't talk to each other. Same old story. You could apply that almost to any industry, same old story. But in healthcare, that has a unique impact on what's happening to the patients and the providers. So in a relatively short amount of time, my colleague took, he said, hey, the emergency department notifies other areas when patients are coming in. If they're, if they're gonna be admitted to the hospital, the inpatient system needs to know about them. So there was an interface existing that talked to, that had information about patients in the emergency room. 
And he knew the doctors that worked out of the ambulatory system didn't know about the emergency department activity. So really on a, what we would call a stealth project, <laughs> um, not approved, not funded, but didn't really need that much because the data existed, he took a feed from the emergency department and created a system that would find the primary care, the responsible physician, and if the physician wanted it, would send a message to that alphanumeric pager that, hey, Dr. Smith, your patient, Mr. Jones, has presented in the Mass General Emergency Department. Very simple. The doctors became aware of what was happening. The doctors then knew you know, a little bit more about their patients, that in such a large organization and with all this data, maybe they didn't know before. And that's a, that's a key piece. Like, we didn't have to invent something new. We didn't have to create new widgets. We didn't have to do much of anything. I, I know my, my former colleague would argue that. They lost a weekend working on this. But we made such a change, and we disrupted a few things. I'll come back to the, to the disruption. I'll come back to Sweet Madeline in a little bit. Um, but I want to talk about, about CVS Health and where this kind of fits into what we've been doing, what my work has, has been there for now 13 years, working to disrupt healthcare. There's a lot of good things about healthcare. We, we tend to focus on the negatives, but there are a lot of good things happening. The work that you guys are doing, those of you in healthcare, is just incredible. And there are moments when we, as whether you're a provider, physician, caregiver, or technologist, or administrator, you have that moment where, hey, this is why I work in healthcare. CVS is, I'm not going to read all these, <laughs> but. Um, um, I want to talk about what we're trying to do. We're trying to become a, a leading healthcare solutions company. We want to improve the consumer experience. But to do that, we have to improve the provider experience. We have to improve every experience along the continuum. We're doing that with data. We're doing that, I would argue, with some common sense and putting that together. The areas of CVS now that you're probably most familiar with are CVS Pharmacy, almost five million people a day come through that door, high touch, a lot of information, a lot of data. Uh, I'll come back to Minute Clinic. Caremark, our pharmacy benefits management. Sharon, who's taking care of Tyler as a quorum home infusion nurse, is part of Caremark, is part of a pharmacy benefits management company that does incredible work with nurses in the homes. Again, when you think of Caremark and the PBM, you don't think of nurses in the homes taking care of patients and supporting patients like Tyler. Aetna, I used to say Aetna, our most recent acquisition, but now we're several acquisitions down the road from that. Um, but an, an incredible team in healthcare benefits, an incredible amount of data, an incredible um, uh, opportunity to lower costs and improve, not only improve outcomes, but improve access to care. So let me come back to Minute Clinic. And Minute Clinic was actually a, a business case on disruptive innovation. And many of you are familiar with Clay Christensen's con concept on that, that uh, something new comes into the market. Back then it was just a retail clinic. It was a clinic inside a pharmacy that disrupted healthcare by changing the way that people accessed it. And there's a disruption curve. With our interoperability focus, we were able to flatten that curve and move retail care or urgent care or convenient care, however you want to call it, more into the norm. We connected so that similar to the Mass General doctor knowing someone was in the emergency department, the primary care physician would know that their patient was treated at Minute Clinic on a Sunday afternoon or a, a Monday evening when their office was closed. So it became a, a good thing for the patient.
low cost, low barrier to access, convenient, good thing for the provider. I'm not doing more on calls. I know what's happening with my patients. I'm getting that information. And really started to change how we thought of our healthcare continuum. This became another lever within the continuum that we could use as, as a population to get healthcare, to access healthcare. Where we're going now is some of our new acquisitions. <laughs> um, you know, we're building on that. The Minute Clinic over 1,000 locations in the United States. Um, a recent acquisition of Oak Street Health, um, which is a, um, uh, a new practice for us. It's really consumer-centric and uh, clinics across 21 states and incorporating that into our ecosystem and our data ecos ecosystem. So it's another arm of care that our patients and our members, our consumers can take advantage of, expanding that continuum of care once again. Signify Health, um, really excited about um, in the home health space and, and kind of the physician enablement, but 10,000 clinicians coming in. So really doubling down on the home health side. Now the key to this is that that Signify clinician or that Minute Clinic nurse practitioner or that CVS pharmacy pharmacist or that Aetna care manager or nurse Sharon taking care of Tyler has the data that they need to understand the needs of that patient. And you'll hear me jump back and forth between consumer and patient or member. It's all the same person. Uh, with my background in the academic medical centers, I tend to fall back to patient quite often. But this is expanding what we do, starting you know, with our pharmacy and that high touch environment to a virtual environment to, to a lot of different areas. That delivery is changing. What we did with that pager at Mass General would still work in this new environment, but how patients are getting care is dramatically changing in this country, in part because some of what CVS is doing, but also in a big way in how we responded to the pandemic, all of us responding to the pandemic, and, and really how we're able to move this data and connect these systems in a much easier way, a much more holistic fashion. These are some pretty um, amazing numbers on what the consumers and the providers are really expecting. And what we saw in the chat GPT example this morning uh, that Don did, the, uh, the support, the 88% of the physicians wanting more time with their complex patients, that sort of technology is, is gonna help there. Greater than 60% have had a bad experience, a recent bad experience with healthcare providers. 60% a recent bad experience. And if you think about your own interactions, I think about mine sometimes. My, my primary care hates me, by the way, because I critique all his data needs <laughs> or his data access. And you know, a lot of it is around, when you dig into the bad experience, a lot of it is the lack of knowledge by the provider. How many times have you been asked to give me this information, give me that information? The data needs to flow. The data needs to be available and accessible. We've passed laws about it. We've uh, implemented rules from, uh, from our federal government about it, but yet it still is a barrier and we're still working to do that. The cost is another piece, cost and access. We used to say at Minute Clinic, Part of the uh, positive piece of retail health is that it was accessible. You could get in and see someone. Back when Minute Clinic, when I first joined Minute Clinic, there was a, I think it was about a six, six to eight week wait on average to see your primary care physician. So you end up going to the emergency room for something really bad, or, or you sit in your house, you know, how's that rash? Two months later, you're, you're finally able to be seen. You end up going to the emergency room, the highest cost area of care, yet you introduce a little disruption 
minute clinic. I can be seen today. You connect it with data. Okay, here's, here's Jim's diagnosis. Here's what we did. Here's our note with Jim. And all goes in and integrated into the clinician's workflow, my primary care physician. We've lowered the cost. We've improved access. Hopefully, we've improved the consumer's experience. I know I've, I've been a minute clinic patient. It certainly was easier um, than going to my primary care. So it's, it's an incredible um, push that we're getting on these different levers. But again, just like that, that Mass General experience or even go back to Madeline, she wanted the BIPA. We had it. We had it and we could put it to use. We could put it to use to inform those physicians. We could put it to use across the board. So retail and, and urgent clinics are, have really stepped in to do this. Um, you see us with Oak Street and with uh, an investment that it's not an acquisition, but an investment we've announced in Carbon Health. It'll expand our urgent care, um, urgent care access or urgent care footprint. Um, and our, our friends at uh, Walgreens plan to open, you know, a thousand primary care clinics. These are huge numbers represents huge data. The data has to flow, and that's what CVS is committed to. We've committed to a vendor agnostic pooling of our clinical information to create a longitudinal record outside of, outside of vendors adhering to fire standards and making sure that this data is available. So wherever you come in our enterprise or anyone outside of our enterprise that has a legal use of the information can get to it. We're really excited about um, all the opportunities there. I'm going to go. I'm watching my clock and seeing them. Um, and this is rare, too, that I'm a little bit behind schedule. Um, some of the areas that uh, we're seeing also is um, in virtual care. So virtual first care. Now, this was available before the pandemic. We had telehealth. Remember, we used to call it telehealth. Now it's virtual care. Sounds much more official. Took a pandemic to change that term, I believe, <laughs> from telehealth to that. Um, but we have the ability to access providers remotely. We have retail and urgent care growing exponentially, from not just us, from others as well. And really, the the tech enablement is uh, the tech enabled hybrid care is making sure our digital solutions connect it all, so that if you start in a virtual space or start in a retail urgent care space and then need to move to a higher level of care, a different level of care, a different site of care, that information is flowing in there for the consumer. And that creates uh, a much quicker, much quicker, more uh, enjoyable, remember that's over 60%. So I think um, me saying connected touch points are key is really redundant. <laughs> But some of the areas, you know, some of the things that we're excited about behind this is the data, the data connection. We think this is slowly becoming not so much a disruption, but more of the norm that we believe can improve and move forward our healthcare system, our entire ecosystem. Um, one, one area that I want to call on here is the 50 state access, including behavioral health. There's been a lot of talk about behavioral health, mental health coming out of the pandemic. Um, and we have made a commitment to make sure that that is accessible as well. We're not talking about just pink eye and earaches and sore throats. We are talking about true healthcare problems uh, that people will benefit from access to a provider 24 seven in all 50 states. Really excited about uh, the work some of my colleagues are doing there. So a little bit more about where we're headed. We want to increase that engagement. We want to bring that 60% down. We want to make it easier. And how do we do that? I believe it is through the data availability. It is through using something we have already, that emergency department arrival, that pager, using what we have already to just connect our systems to connect our providers and our patients 
because the patient is in this too. We, CVS Health firmly believes that the patient owns their medical information. So we have the patient engagement and really making it um, more comprehensive than it was in the early days of Minute Clinic. Supporting the, the better outcomes, the 360 degree uh, patient view, our clinical data repository now has, I believe, and somewhere in the audience, my colleague Brian Tate will check me on this, over 265 million lives in it. Now, we don't have full medical records on that, but those, those patients have interacted with CVS Health. And we want to make sure that if they interact again, we're not asking them again, what's your insurance? Where, where do you live? What's your phone number? All that stuff. Make it a better experience and give our clinicians that view. Here's all the information we have on Jim as a patient so the clinician can deliver the best possible care. She's back. She's back right on time, too. Good job, Madeline, which is very rare for that young lady. <laughs> but before we finish Madeline's story, I want to finish the Mass General story. So we started with Madeline. We went to Mass General. We went to CVS. Now we're going to go back to Mass General. You're all paying attention. I appreciate it. So nice story, Jim, but really sending pager notifications to doctors, what does that really do? And... This part of the story is the reason I work in healthcare. I've been in healthcare IT since I came out of college. At one point, I was pretty sure that I would, you know, I'd do this for a little bit, you know, a couple years, and then I'd go get a better job. I'd, I'd go do something, you know, cooler. I'd do something more on the tech side. And then that, that first job, that first employer lasted uh, 18 years or so. So I was, I was wrong in that prediction. But during those 18 years is when my colleague built that notification system. I ran into him um, in the hallways of Mass General not long after that. And we had already talked, I knew about the system, we had talked about it. Could tell he was a little upset. I said, hey, what, what's going on? He's like, oh, I, I just ran into Dr. We'll call him Dr. Jones. And I was like, yeah, I know, I know Dr. Jones. He's, he's an um, icon at Mass General. And he said he complimented me on the notification system. Said, That's great. Great job. <laughs> he said he got a notification that one of his patients was at the emergency department. Well, data we had, the system we had, pager that he had, he saw, he had a moment, so he's like, well, I'm going to go down and check on him. And the physician told him when he got there, so it was a, a long time, I've been this man's patient, I'm sorry, I've been this man's doctor for over 30 years. I got to the emergency department. Excuse me. There was nothing I could do for him. But I held his hand while he died. You've changed the provider experience. You've changed the patient experience with data. You've disrupted healthcare, a tiny little portion of it. And usually we don't talk about death a lot, but imagine the comfort the patient may have felt and the closure that the physician after a long-term relationship with this patient felt in that. It's my challenge to you because of the moment he told me that story, I know exactly where I was standing and I said I would never work outside of healthcare IT again or ever <laughs> because it's data like that, it's connections like that, that can make that difference. You can disrupt an industry with something as simple as a clinic in a drugstore. You can disrupt an industry with a new idea using something that exists today. My challenge to you is that. Now, to finalize, we have to do the rest of this story. <laughs> the girl with the beeper. This disruption, I would say, turned out okay too. <laughs> she has completed her undergraduate degree. And this is where I'll get really choked up next week. 
a week from Saturday, I am walking her down the aisle as a Thank you. as a very, very proud uh, father of the bride. And it's the little things, her love of beepers, um, and all that that she has been a disruptive force in my life and in her mom's life. Um, we are just thrilled and, and excited, as thrilled and excited as I am to see the ideas that come out of, of this summit and everything that we can put together to change healthcare. It has been an honor and a privilege to speak to you today. I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference and thank you very much. <laughs>